Welcome back to 90 Day Dental Day 25. So we've tackled photography and we've tackled smile design and today we're natural progression for us is to move on to colour and shade matching in dentistry and we've got none other than Richard Porter from Aspire Dental Academy to help us with those over the next two days. So Richard, take it away. Hi everybody, my name is Richard Porter. Thank you for the invitation to talk to you today. So I'm a consultant in restorative dentistry. Um, I'm also a specialist in a number of areas in dentistry. I make my living doing private practice just like you. I treat patients and I expect them to pay me for it. That means you've got to get your dentistry right. And when I set up Aspire Dental Academy with Rahil Malik, my colleague you can see on screen, we made our mission statement just to make it so that patients get better outcomes. The way we do that is to train dentists to just be excellent at their jobs. It's a friendly environment, that means people get the best learning and they end up being able to go back to their practices the next day and make sure they get things right. One of the things we have to get right is colour. We need to get the colour right. Patients value the correct colour on their teeth almost more than anything else. Nobody ever wants to buy tooth yellowing toothpastes. They want tooth whitening toothpastes. They refer to their teeth as being nice, bright and white. People would actually prefer to have a slight chip in a tooth than a, a single dark tooth. So when you and I are fitting our prosthetic work on our patients, there's that seminal moment where you've fitted the work or at least tried it in, you hand them a mirror and then they sit up and they look at it. And that got me fascinated in the color of dentistry and the science behind it. Because the patient looks at it and it produces an emotional reaction in them. And you and I make a living if those emotions are positive. So we're gonna follow this color science and make it realize that it translates into neuroscience. The color science is completely understood and it's relatively complex. For teeth, it's slightly simpler and we tend to break teeth into three areas, the incisal edge, the mid part, and the neck of the tooth. We then apply color science to each of those three bits and we end up with a great result. In the second part of this process, I'm gonna to talk to you about how to actually take a shade in a short, concise, clear way. We're gonna apply the science and put a topping on top of that. I like to ask people, why is the sky blue? Well, as you can see from on screen, it's not blue. Actually, in evenings, it can be these lovely oranges or reds. And if we can understand the color science, we can understand the fact that teeth reflect light in a particular way, just like our atmosphere does, and that produces the beautiful colors we see on the back of our eyes. So for us, it's wavelengths of photons that you actually get to see. Photons also produce heat, and they produce radio waves and microwaves, but some of them you get to see. But one side of that's ultraviolet, and the other edge of that is infrared, and everything in the middle, you and I get to see. And it's the bits that patients see when they look at a mirror that makes a big difference. Look at this guy on the screen. What would you think if that was you? What colour should we describe those teeth as? I think they're best described as urinal yellow. And that's not the type of dentistry we want to do. They're completely opaque. They just don't look real. They don't look authentic. So it's this middle area of the electromagnetic spectrum where we concentrate our mind, our efforts, and our practical applications to make sure we control how that light moves. It's the electromagnetic spectrum, ultimately, that makes you and I have a good day at the office or a bad day. If you look on the top right hand side of the screen as well you're going to see a black white and gray area if there's no photons at all none you've got total darkness if you have all the photons together from the whole visible light spectrum it's pure bright white somewhere in the middle is the perfect middle gray and that might be important for other practical applications so the behavior of light is what we need to understand when it comes to color science. And again, if you look at your screen, you've got two crowns, both made to a simple A3 prescription. But one of them's got a metal core, and the other one's got a ceramic core. It's actually a zirconia core. They grab light and make it behave in different ways. The metal core is dark. Now, if you put a dark towel on the beach in the sun and a white towel on the beach in the sun, more photons are converted to heat. The black towel burns your bottom. The white towel might still be hot, but hopefully it doesn't burn you. So these two crowns look slightly different because one of them has taken photons and absorbed it, 
and it looks somehow darker, less bright, and the other one reflects more light. We need to understand that influencing factors from the core from patient's lipstick confuses us and watch this optical illusion. Those two squares on screen appear totally different colors. We take out all of the confusing, opt confusing optimal illusions and look, they're the same color. If I could run this back, you can watch that time and time again. So let's get inside the tooth now. The value of a tooth is it's black, gray, white. We call that value, how black, gray or white it is. And dentists love loads of stupid terminology. So you can hear that called brightness or luminosity. We just call it value, it's black, white. It's determined by the enamel on size of a tooth. What happens to your enamel as you age? Not much really, it gets thinner, you don't grow new enamel, and it gets slightly more translucent. As it gets more translucent, you can see through it more clearly. What do you see when you see through it more clearly? The darker yellow or dentine. Older people have yellower teeth. Your eyes can't see value hue and chroma, but they do see what's wrong very quickly. And errors in the value, the black white scale, are spotted instantaneously by people's eyes. People will spot a dark tooth from a mile away. And it's because your eye is made up of rods and cones and the rods that see black and white, they never get tired, they never run out of energy, and they're always ready to detect problems. The hue and chroma and errors in that, we'll come on to talk about in a second. But look at this picture of these two pieces of window glass. One of them's completely see-through, the other one's quite opaque. And this is this new magic glass you can get. This is what happens with enamel. Young patients' enamel tends to be more opaque and reflects more of that white light, the image on your left. As you age, it becomes thinner and more translucent so you can see through it more clearly. That's enamel, it's different translucencies. Young patients have lots of enamel, but it's, more tran it's less translucent. It's got more interprasmetic substance left behind. And the interprasmetic substance reflects a lot of white light. It looks opaque, like a dinner plate rather than a window glass. So it reflects more light and looks whiter. Young people have whiter teeth. Guess what? That's why tooth whitening toothpaste sells. Enamel also has this characteristic called an opalescence. And we're nearly done with enamel. And this is just how it then reflects and transmits light in a different way. And if you think of what the sky looks like from midday to sunset, the atmosphere hasn't really changed, but the sun and the sky looks a very different color. That's opalescence and it's blue or amber. Look at this image, it describes it perfectly. There's a different density of the atmosphere underneath that cloud. So it looks yellow and orange and very pretty. And the sky above it is thinner, the atmosphere is thinner, so the blue photons can still dominate. They can't dominate underneath. We then move inside the tooth, and inside the tooth is where you get the hue. And that's just the basic color. It could be green, it could be pink, it could be blue, whatever. It's just hue. And in teeth, it tends to be a yellowy, maybe with orange or red or a bit of gray. But it tends to be based around that. That's hue. The chroma is how saturated that hue is. I'll explain that in a second. When you look at a Vita shade guide, you tend to see these arranged in A, B, C, and D. A, B, C, and D are different hues. The chroma is the number. If you look at this bottle of wine and you took one drop of that wine and dropped it into, you just literally get a pipette, one drop and drop it into a pint of water, the hue hasn't changed, but the chroma has. Think of a glass of red wine or Ribena, whatever you prefer, take one drop out, drop it into a pint of water, the hue hasn't changed, but the chroma has. So that means that the dentine gives us no trans, not much translucency, that comes from the enamel and so does the value, but the hue and the chroma come from within the tooth. And the dentine also, also offers all the opacity. It's much more opaque than enamel. The last thing to talk about is when you look at a tooth like this, and this will slip us nicely into the second part of this lecture is intensives. And you can see that white spot on the tip of that tooth is probably associated with that fracture. You can see probably a trauma history here, but nevertheless, that white intensive might be an area of hypomineralization. And sometimes you see these diffused all over the teeth and that can give you a very, very opaque outer layer on top of the tooth. 
That's colour in a nutshell. See you next time. Such an important concept to try and understand before we go on to the topic of shade matching because it's so relevant and so important to understand the basics and the fundamentals of it before we actually start looking at patients' teeth and how to uh, diagnose and match them. So let's finish this topic off tomorrow and I'll see you then.